Right, uh, that was yesterday, and of course this has formed a substantial part of discourse, the fact that uh, the IBC Commissioner and uh, the Chairman and uh, of course the National Presidential Returning Office cannot vary the results, cannot edit, cannot do anything, but says that you should inform the public of the discrepancies before you declare the winner. If there's any contest, it should go to the court, and the court obviously shall give direction regarding errors. I take this opportunity to begin our standing on guard this morning with my panel and of course the breaking story we're running for you is Commissioner Rosalina Akombe of the IBC has resigned. One of the reasons that Akombe is giving is that uh, the li lives are at stake and the commission cannot continue to operate with the constant fear of uh, uh, on the lives and uh, uh, obviously of other officials who are working for them elsewhere, and she cited several areas, Siaya, Homa Bay, Kisumu, where the staff are unable to work, and she says that it's unattainable for a free, fair, credible election to be held on the 26th, and he says that uh, the commission just needs to be frank with Kenyans, and uh, they just need a few men and women who can stand, stand with the truth and say that uh, the situation as it is, that was not obtaining on the 1st of September, when the Supreme Court ordered a re-election within 60 days is totally different from this particular point. So with that in mind, she left for Dubai to inspect the printing of ballot papers, but she has left for New York and she has released that statement. I want to introduce uh, Professor Noah Midamba. He's a Vice Chancellor and the Chief Executive Officer and a Professor of Defense and Foreign Policy at the KCA University. He joins us this morning. Uh, Dr. Oliver Kisaka, Chaplain and Lecturer at Africa International University also joins us this morning and uh, Dr. Mustafa Yusuf Ali, a conflict resolution and security expert also joins us this morning and of course Mashara Njeru of the IPOA chairman IPOA also joins us in studio and gentlemen thank you so much for coming. You know, I'm looking forward to the day I'll have a lady security expert also sitting on this panel. <laughs> but that's for another day. Thank you for coming. And I think we begin with the resignation of Commissioner Kombe because it's vital. One of the reasons that she is citing is the ongoing protest and intimidation of staffs and potential loss of life. In conclusion, she says that uh, the, uh, what happened in 2007, 2008, Eight should not be forgotten and as a, as a result of that she no longer sees herself as making meaningful contribution to the IBC and her country. I'd like you gentlemen to comment about her resignation going forward and of course the threat to the lives and I'll begin with Masharia Njeru. Masharia. Yeah, thank you. Ken, <clears throat> for me obviously I'm in a difficult situation because I prefer to speak to matters that uh, relate to our mandate as opposed to general issues except uh, of course, as a Kenyan, I can comment and say that uh, it's uh, particularly sad mm -hmm. uh, for a senior official like that to resign, particularly this time. Uh, if I was in her shoes, would I resign? Certainly not, because I am a firm believer that it is uh, at times of challenges that you rise to that occasion and uh, do whatever you can uh, to salvage but not to jump ship. So I, I, would, I don't think it's the right thing. But uh, of obviously, she's entitled to her position, okay. uh, which, which only her would tell why she had to take that uh, position. All right. Uh, Dr. Mustafa. Yeah, Ken, the reasons that Akombe has given uh, f uh, in tendering her resignation uh, um, uh, appears to me to be, um, well, the reasons are very valid. That uh, it's very difficult for the IEBC to conduct uh, credible elections given under, under the circumstances uh, um, of, of, of pressure, intimidation, uh, demonstrations, protests and counter-protests. It's very difficult. And in that, then you have the IEBC officials coming under intense pressure. We've just seen in Kisumu that the IEBC officials were being harangued, harassed, threatened, and, and, and uh, 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 in, in, in criminal activities. Um, and so the political leaders in this country have to make a decision how they want to move on. In particular, those who are protesting demonstrations that are not going to take this country anywhere, especially at this time when we are going to an election. It has to, it has to, now we need to see states, men and women speaking. It's, it's, it's now about the national interest the survival of this country. 
uh, with regard to uh, her resignation, she is entitled to whatever decision uh, 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 she makes based on her own uh, uh, um, uh, judgment. Uh, uh, um, I'm not in her shoes, and it's very difficult to, to say that uh, uh, you know what she did uh, is, 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 is something that uh, should have been done uh, uh, or not. But it's very clear now that the IEBC officials, under such intense pressure, are not going to really function uh, uh, properly. And it behoves the politicians in this country, especially those that are out on the streets, to actually rethink about their actions. Okay. And she says expressly, Mustafa, that uh, the commission is under siege, expressly. Precisely, and 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 uh, she expressed uh, 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 fears of her life before. We've seen some of the and that I of her family also. and that of her family. Yeah. We are seeing that the IEBC officials in Kisumu, I think we, uh, um, I was seeing that for the first time, also expressing fears for their for their lives. And so IEBC is under siege, and is is is. Uh, uh, I don't have the details of what kind of challenges that they are having at IEBC right now. Uh, um, and, and such institutions will always have challenges, especially moving forward to uh, uh, an election like this in a country which is characterized by contractor democracy, uh, a warlord uh, 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 democracy. What politicians should do right now is to tone down the rhetorics, not to, not, to, not to move this country into a constitutional crisis. We okay. are not there yet. This is a political challenge. Let us resolve it before it becomes a crisis. All right. And uh, Dr. Uh, Kisaka, t tell me something. When he says that we just need a few men and women who can stand up to the truth and tell Kenyans that we cannot hold the election on 26th. Well, it's difficult for me to know exactly the circumstances surrounding that. Um, good practice would require that uh, members of the commission meet in their boardroom, discuss these issues, agree on a common position, and come out standing as a team. I think the country is in such a delicate situation that when things like this happen, they do not uh, contribute towards confidence and trust. And I think as a panelist this morning, I would be urging that whatever anybody does uh, helps the country move towards trust and, and a possibility for us to navigate these waters properly. Um, I think both the Jubilee and NASA ought to know that unless there is a commission, none of them can access power constitutionally. There are no angels coming to run these elections. There must be trust. We already threw out an IEBC Another IEBC is in place. This IEBC was not more than eight months experienced. They may have made some very, faced some very significant challenges and were found by the Supreme Court not to have followed the Constitution in one or two issues. But that is, when we look at these matters from a, the negative side of things, the half-empty glass side of things, if you look at it from the half full side of things, one ought to actually commend a group of Kenyans for taking over an IEBC in just eight months. Okay. Organizing all those matters under so many judicial uh, cases and being able to conduct an election. And all they have said is that they have received instructions from the Supreme Court and they are trying to implement those uh, instructions. So if innocent Kenyans who are offering themselves to be part of the electioneering process as officers can be attacked by fellow Kenyans just for offering themselves, who is going to offer themselves, you know? So I think they are, we are requiring leadership from the principals that are involved in this matter to know that personally I am wondering whether any of them has actually appreciated the demands of the new constitution and the kind of civility it requires for us to be able to work together as Kenyans. Okay. If they did, 
they should be calling their people to civil relationships. They should be calling them to mutual respect. And they should be, they should be pursuing truth. Those who are pursuing truth, they should be pursuing justice. Those who are pursuing justice, but they should do it in a civil way. All right. I, before I speak to Prof here, one more question for you. He sa she says, it's increasingly becoming difficult even to attend plenary meetings because you meet commissioners there who have predetermined positions and not based on uh, the decisions they are going to make there. And for her, it's increasingly becoming difficult even to defend positions in the media she does not believe in. And uh, she also talks about people in the commission representing partisan interests. It's, it's uh, Ken, this is Kenya. I hardly think that it will be said of many Kenyans that they would not have leanings, that there won't be efforts from various quarters to try and influence positions, outcomes, variously. The fact that you have been given a leadership position as an IEBC commission now the demands on your office are that you rise up all these intricate pressures and give Kenyans a credible election. Okay. Now, when she resigns, she does demonstrate to us that perhaps she wasn't up to the task from the beginning. That's one side. But the other side must be that the other institutions, for example, that, that ought to protect their lives, haven't given them the confidence that they require Okay. to be sure that they, are, that they are going to be alive. And we have lost Kenyans through various unfair circumstances. I think I would myself say that this is the position when people get together, discuss in the boardroom, differ if they must, uh, seriously if they must, hopefully not fight, and afterwards come up and say we negotiated until we agreed on a common position that that is of the IEBC. All right. It is their history going forward. Okay. Uh, Prof, talk to us about her resignation. And in the face of all this, someone may look at them as excuses before she resigned. Ken, uh, uh, number one, I would say um, uh, this is a really uh, very unfortunate uh, turn of events. Um, uh, Rosemary Akombe uh, seems to me to be one of the active uh, leaders in the process of uh, projecting IEBC uh, role, uh, and I'm sure that she was very helpful to the chairman and the leadership of IEBC. But I can also understand her as a person uh, subjecting herself to really serious security, security challenges and also subject her family. And I'm also thinking, and I'm now just thinking for her, if I cannot deliver credible election, then why should I be part of this package? I, a week ago, over a week ago, I, I read a direct message uh, to President uh, Kenyatta and also Honorable Raila. Uh, Odinga, on which I call on them uh, to meet and, and help redirect the country, help redirect IBC, help redirect our security. And I'm asking because I'm very um, happy with one thing that a headline on the nation today indicate that Rail Odinga is ready to meet uh, President Kenyatta. I would urge both of them to meet without precondition, to meet without the advisors, because this situation is degenerating. If we don't have credible IBC, we cannot have credible election, and therefore we are going to degenerate into more chaos and more killing of innocent people. The time is now for the two of them to get together, and that will help ease the pressure that the security is having and the IBC and the confusion surrounding everything in the economy today. All right.
Let's bring back the discussion to security now, and I'll start with uh, Masharia. We have seen the demonstrations, and um, the police have uh, also taken a lot of beating, literally. We saw in Kisumu, we have seen uh, attacks um, on police posts. We have seen provocation being taken to the security zone of the police, the police stations. And um, Masharia, obviously you were on radio and you commented about this. And uh, one of the things that you said on radio the other day is um, that, uh, let me just read for you this, um, is that uh, police are also human, you know, police are also human. And uh, you say that uh, the police tell you that if you push them too hard, they will also be unable to perform. But first, paint for us the picture in which the police are working outside here in the face of this, what people are calling uh, not protests, but uh, uh, disruptions. Before I jump into that issue, let, let me sign off on this issue of uh, the resignation because okay. I, I was just thinking as a chair of uh, an institution that has also sometimes been under intense pressure because if, we, if you're talking about pressure, I can tell you, for me and my team in my organization, okay. we can define to you what pressure is in real terms because we've lived it as an institution since when we came into the inception. We've had situations whereby there has been very serious tension between us and the police before. We've been under intense pressure sometimes from uh, the executive. Uh, I remember when the issue of police recruitment, you had to go to court and have it cancelled. It brought a lot of issues between us and the institution. We've had even issues between us and the public. I recall there was a time when um, a police officer was arrested and arraigned in court in Gedurai. And uh, Gedurai residents blocked the roads, uh, demonstrated against us, and uh, were under intense pressure also from the politicians. So we know what pressure, pressure is. is. <coughs> but you don't resign when you're under pressure. You stand firm and you continue dealing with the issues because public positions are not for the faint-hearted. And as long as you believe that you're doing the right thing and you are serving the public, you continue doing your work, uh, knowing very well that you have a mandate to deliver on, but uh, you, know, you take things as they come. Secondly, I can also say that uh, I have served actually for the last 16, 17 years now in boards of institutions where I have either been chair or a board member, there is no time that you'll have a board or an institution that this unanimity of uh, thoughts. There are always all these differences. But all you do is that uh, in spite of the differences, you try to bring everybody into a consensus. You come into an agreement. And the differences within an institution should not necessarily mean that if a position is different from yours, that uh, you know, yours must be necessarily the correct one. Uh, especially for me, having served as a chair in several institutions, not just in IPOA, uh, I have always uh, been alive to the fact that uh, what is important is to make sure that the differences don't go beyond the boardroom. Because uh, when it goes outside the boardroom, then it affects the institution. So I would encourage the IEBC to continue standing together and know that they have a mandate to deliver and particularly to serve the country at uh, this uh, particular time and not to expose their differences to the public. That is uh, an issue now that I would rather not speak further beyond that. Now, coming to the question that you've raised, there are challenges. And uh, let me say that uh, these challenges of demonstrations and the tension and all that, we must also be alive to the fact that it should not be something that we can say that was never unexpected. Because elections and politics are very emotive issues. And uh, for us as a country, we must accept that it will take time before we can all level down and be able to be one cohesive society that can read from the same script. So these issues will always keep arising. It is how we manage them that is most critical. Uh, mitigating those issues to ensure that they don't split the country or they don't become a security threat in themselves. Now, our experience with these demonstrations is that yes, there has been uh, serious challenges both from the side of the police themselves in how they handle it, but also on the side of uh, the public. Because as I was saying in the, that radio interview, as you said, is that uh, we are in a unique situation whereby, as IPOA, we also receive complaints from the police. And we don't receive complaints from the police because we choose to. It's because that's what the law says, that we receive complaints from both the members of the public and the police. Now. We cannot say that the police have handled 
uh, these demonstrations in a professional manner to the extent that they could be able to minimize uh, loss of lives and also injuries to the members of the public. There has been issues. And uh, those issues, I can tell you, we are equal to the task in terms of investigating them and ensuring that all the errant police officers, the rogue police officers, action is taken against them. There has to be trust and the confidence in Ipoa for us to handle our job. Investigations do take time because you must remember that uh, the threshold of evidence that is required by the ODPP is also high. We don't go as Ipoa on fault-finding mission. We go to look for truth, and that is based on facts and evidence. And wherever that fact and evidence will take us, we'll be able to get those rogue police officers. That is one angle. But on the other hand, there are also demonstrators who knowingly go to a demonstration, not to do it peacefully, but with a view to engaging in confrontation with the police. Okay. It has been in media, I mean, it's open. It, you've seen people carrying stones uh, on slings and throwing them at the police. Uh, police stations have been attacked. And police officers have actually been attacked, even uh, seriously injured. In fact, we have several officers who are still in hospital, who, God forbid, could even possibly die out of the serious injuries that uh, they've uh, faced. And all over the world, I can tell you, Ken, that uh, the most serious offense you can commit, especially in uh, civilized jurisdictions, is attacking a police officer. When you attack a police officer, life in a city literally comes to a standstill and the authorities deal with your family because one thing you cannot afford okay. as a country, if you want a breakdown of law and order completely where we come to ground zero, is if we encourage a situation whereby police officers are attacked because they are the people that all of us run to when you're in a situation. And let us not demonize the entire National Police Service because there's a sizable number of police officers who are very good, who, are in, right. who put their lives in harm's way and who do their job in a honest manner. But like in any society, there's a section that is bad. They are roguish, just like even in corporate institutions, we all serve in other institutions besides police service, and you have our weaknesses. Okay. So we must be alive to that issue and say, let us say no to the rogue police officers and let's deal with them firmly. But the good ones, let's not demonize them. We encourage them so they can continue maintaining law and order in our republic. All right. Yeah.